Lordy. Hello, everyone. I am the Honorable Lord Ian the Green, as many of you know. Um, today, we are going to be touching on, uh, well, working on, actually, um, Batard. Uh, Batard has a lot of different names, uh, Gothic, Lectura, Bastarda, uh, Batard, Bastarda, Bastard, you name it. Yes, it actually means Bastard. Um, and Batard is a script that was created purposefully or constructed purposefully, depending on what language you want, you know, what, what version of, of the word you want to use, um, from Gothics. And it is a Gothic script, and it is one of my favorite scripts. Um, Batard got, is what happened when they got tired of the strict rigidity of gothic of different kinds of gothics and started to make it a little curvy a little swoopy but it still has that rigidity it still has a requirement for paying attention to detail uh it's just not as much as say um gothic persisios or gothic texture or quadrata um but it is still there um so and there isn't one type of batard. People like to say, oh, batard. Well, batard is an umbrella term. It is not one kind. Uh, and so uh, I actually teach, a, I have a class where I teach people how to analyze a script by looking at it in a manuscript. And it's a batard script. And what I, what I tell them at the beginning of the class is they're learning how to write batard. And at the end of class, I tell them I lied to them. Yes, they did learn how to learn to, to write batard. But what they really learned was how to analyze a script in a, in a, in, from a manuscript and then translate it to how they might want to write it. Um, I thought about doing that for this class and decided, no, no, we'll do that another time. Um, we'll, we'll learn how to do that in another time. So today we're just going to go over it. Um, we're going to focus, on, it is a minuscule script, meaning that it has two different ways of writing letters, your quote capitals and your minuscules or your majuscules and your minuscules, depending on who you ask. So um, I am not going to teach this necessarily A to Z, but I am going to go ahead and go start with A and then I'm going to go to X. So as you can see, we do this at four nib widths high uh, at a 45 degree pen angle. I have not seen a batard that consistently is less than 40 degrees or more than 50 degrees. Um, some batards do get less than four nib widths. Um, and I have seen some very ornamental batards um, that went up to six or seven nib widths, but it was for a very short amount of time. It was purposefully done ornamentally, and then it shrunk itself back down to only about four nib widths. Three and a half seems to actually be more common, um, but four nib widths is what I work with uh, when, I, when I'm teaching it. All right. So the letter A is uh, a curve to the left, a curve to the right, and then a curve to the left, except curves in Batard are not usually real curves. They're more like a rounded angle. So let's deal with that first. At a 45 degree angle, we go straight until we get to about midway of the line. And then we go ahead and curve. Pen starts inside at the top, then it comes back and touches. And that's a true curve. It, it, the whole time it's a curve. And this, when you get done writing it, looks like it curved the entire time, but it didn't. It was, and I will do this again, straight line, get halfway, then curve. Oh, look, it's an A. It's literally one, two, one. It's, that's, it really is that easy. And it looks like you might have done, I'll come here, then I'll bring this down, and I did this. But that's not what it is. That's an illusion by how it's been constructed and put together.
And that becomes more obvious when I break it up a little more like that. But even throwing that in. So straight curve, bring it up a little curve, straight curve, bring it up a little. And that is an A. By the way, without putting the tail on it, you just made an O. Um, so the tard really is a script where it's kind of like Legos. You learn what the pieces and parts are and they just kind of go together depending on how you want to do it. Case in point, the letter X. We're going to do the second stroke first, the second stroke of the A first. Now we're going to do the first stroke. And now we're done. Congratulations, you wrote an X. And literally all I did was take the O and flip it around and then because that's the O, right? And the A if we put in the last tail. So if I do this in reverse, I get an X. So you've actually already learned three letters. You learned how to make an O. You've learned how to make an X. You just didn't know it at the time. And you learned how to make an A. And you've only done three strokes. Um, we can add to this and we can make a C. Straight curve. Now you can start it here and make a little bit of a curve there and you get your C. The other way you can do this is start up here and do that. And you get a little bit of a point when you do that. This is actually pretty common to see in Vitards where they have a little bit of a point on both the C and the E. Um, and that's one way to get that point. The other way to get the point, start there and then start it from up there. I don't like this as much um, because as you can see, this really kind of ends up looking like it leans forward. It's just easier to make that mistake. That doesn't mean that you can't do it that way. It just means that you need to be careful if you're going to do it that way. And stop at appropriate. And sometimes you got to bring it up. So um, I just find it easier to already have the spike there and then start a little lower. For whatever reason, that looks good on my paper, but not on the, uh, not on the screen, huh? All right, so we have a C. E is essentially just a C with another line on it. So you do that and then you bring it in. Straight curve. You have your E. The letter D is kind of like the letter O, but made a little bit differently. And I'm sorry I drew the lines in haste. So let me go ahead and make a ladder here real quick. So we actually know what the height's supposed to be. Again, first stroke of the A, O, C, and E. Fairly simple and straightforward. And now we actually have to deal with an ascender. 
what is the ascender height on Batard? At least 2x height, anywhere between 4 and 7x height after that. Again, depending on what you're trying to do, regional time period, that kind of stuff. For my purposes, I keep them be around 3 or 4 myself. Um, but that doesn't make it the only way. So basically, it's start up here. You want to have an imaginary straight line up. And you essentially are making that first stroke again. But now you follow it all the way through to there. And don't miss. That was really kind of silly of me. I was concentrating more on talking. So we'll do that again. And that's an okay D, not a good D. So that is a much better D. Now, the fun thing with Batard is you can have things on your ascenders. So I'll move down a line here real quick to, so it doesn't get caught up with the other stuff. All right, nice and big so you can see it. So there's two different things I can do here. Well, more than that. One of them is just do that. Make a nice fun swoop. And that works and it's very eye catching. Um, you see a lot of these in a line and you really go, wow, that's pretty, or at least a lot of people do. Um, there's another option. And this, these are options with just about any of the A senders. Um, 1450 French document that I was looking at, um, they always have them like that. They loop it. And so this becomes just something very simple like that. Um, so the F is its own, the F and the tall S, um, very similar, their own little bit of weirdness, take some pen manipulation. So we've done A, B, C, D, E, oh, we haven't done B, let me do B. Yeah, let me do B. So B and L start off the same. And if you leave it there, you have an L. You're done, you don't need to do much more. This leg can be longer or shorter depending on what you have it next to, just make it fit. To make, turn that into a B, we go about to the waistline. In this case, um, I'm a little short again. You wanna go just below it, come up, and then bring it forward and curve back and land in that. And then you can either go out or in. Pick one, don't do both. So the B starts off as an L. Bring this up, in, then forward, then back. And so that in, then forward, then back looks like this. I'm here, I come back a little, so I'm half a nib width, quarter of a nib width. And I curve up like that, just like I did for the E. And then I curve back in like that. And if you don't want to put in the tail or the loop, you don't have to. Um, I think it looks better if you do something with it though. All right, so now we've done A, B, C, D, E, and L, and X. Now we're gonna do F and tall S. So we start above, just like any of the ascenders, we bring this up, hit the waistline, 
And as soon as we hit that baseline, pick up the, your pen and go on the corner and pull. Except you got to do it a little bit slower than that because you don't want it to be that sharp. So, and this pen's not doing it the way a. Uh, all right. So for this pen, I would recommend twisting your pen, and that's roughly the way it, it should look. It's not an easy thing to do. With a quill pen, you're pushing down, and then basically you just kind of lift up, and then and then turn your and then lift up to the corner, and you get this. Um, And the F and the tall, the F and the tall S all have a descender to them. So go ahead and this one does not have a loop ever. It always extends out. If you're doing an S, you literally can leave it like that. You don't have to add anything to it. If you want to, you can, but you really, really do not have to. Modify that. There we go. The F, however, pretty much the same. You go ahead and start back here and pull it forward. That's simple enough, but they also have lift your pen up on the corner and bring that down. And that helps draw the eye and draw more attention to it. So we've done A, B, C, D, E, F, L, X, S, tall S. So the G is the next one that we're going to do. And funny enough with the G, it's this stroke from the D. But we're going to start at the waistline and we're going to go lower. There's two ways to do this. I like it this way. Oh, look, it's an S. Not really. You've closed it. And there are things you can do here. You can do that, bring it here. You can put a tail on it if you want. The other way to do this, let's go ahead and make that first O, bring this here, and it closes, right? You've made your O. Then you can pull this down here, come here, and do that. That is also a Batar G. And this G, you can either put a tail on the top or not. Um, my favorite G is the second one. I much prefer that. Um, you notice over here, I didn't quite connect perfectly. You'll see a lot of that in manuscripts. I'm not going to tell you that that's the proper way to do it um, because there's it's it's inconsistent. But if you do that, congratulations, you've been making a mistake that was made back in 1450. So, you know, you're in good company. The letter I usually the simplest letter in most alphabets, most scripts, and it is in this one. However, you finally get to dot your I's again. Congratulations, you've done your I. Please remember to dot it. I have not seen a petard where the I did not get dotted, um, at least inconsistently, uh, meaning that it happened um, often even if it was, it should probably should have happened all the time, but who knows? I haven't found a rule to it. It really is just looks an awful lot like perhaps an uncial eye. 
Well, if you don't want to have that mistake and you want to throw in a little bit of fanciness, you can do this thing that we did here with the B. And that works out just fine. And so really it's come up, stop about a nib width from the baseline, come over, come up halfway, 45 down, a little bit of an up, and you have your eye. So to do it with just that portion here, so it, that is one, two nib widths, in the middle, come down, come up. One nib width, two nib width, come up halfway in it. There is a letter that looks like a J, but it's not. And it's not a letter, it's a number. It is Roman lettering, I, 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 and I. I, I, and I. I. And I. That's four, three, and two. So if you see this, that's not a J. It's the end of the eyes. And four eyes in a row, we're like, oh, shouldn't that be IV? Maybe, but that's not what they often did. They usually just, if it wasn't five, they wrote it out one, two, three, four, with like that. So don't be, you know. Now, how would you write a J if you wanted to? Well, not like that, at least I wouldn't. Baby. I just don't see a way to make a J that looks as pretty all as all of these and still be identified as a J. So K is gonna look a little familiar to you. Make a short L, up, curve in, point out, come here. Now you can actually pierce this and go all the way this way if you want to, but you don't have to. And then this comes here and either stops or goes ahead and bumps. This goes that way. It does not tuck under. So and L, so M and N, there's a lot of ways to write them. That is the most boring way. A more fun way. and the almost cursive way. My pen never lifted. So you can lift up on the corner, but it's not really required. All right, we have 10 minutes left in the meeting. I would like to go ahead and stop with the letter M. It's a friendly way to stop. And uh, I will go ahead and stop the recording if I can find the way to do that. There it is. Um, and then people can ask questions.